Hey you guys, welcome to today's video and today I have some stuff. I have some stuff from Sephora. Guess what I got? That's right, Pat McGrath blushes. You may or may not know that I ordered these blushes from the Pat McGrath site the day they were released, or dropped as they like to say, and it took um, quite some time. I think I got a shipping confirmation on Wednesday or Thursday and I won't get it until Tuesday. Today's Saturday. I noticed yesterday that these were on the Sephora site and last night I thought I wonder if they're in any of the stores and so I did the little thing where you can tell buy and pick up kind of a thing and it was at my closest Sephora which is a very small one so I gave them a ringy ding ding this morning and they said yes we have them they're in the back because we don't have a place for them because this store does not carry Pat McGrath. That's how wide they're going with these blushes. So I went over and I bought myself some blushes and when my blushes get here from Pat McGrath, they're gonna go back. I I'm just gonna say quickly, when you have a makeup brand, it's not just creating makeup, it's also packaging makeup. And they do this nicely, they do this nicely, it's also marketing, they do that really well. And then it's distribution and that's where they suck balls, big hairy ones and I'm very displeased. And I've also gotten comments from people from my community page saying, I got mine in three days, who I think was actually trying to antagonize me, and I deleted it. And um, yeah, it's like a charged issue for me. It really is. You have to, this is a business, and you have to hit all of these issues. Your creation, your packaging, your marketing, and your distribution. <laughs> So, I'm going to stop the camera, and I'm going to open all these up, and we're going to do some swatches. So this is kind of like, I don't know, a cigarette thing. It's a flip top. She did this with foundation. It's a little lavender thing with flowers. And this is what it looks like. It is shiny, which is interesting, because I saw some pictures that made me think it's matte. I open mine easily, but I have heard these are hard to open. And there's no plastic, which is weird. And there's no plastic on the mirror, which is also weird. But uh, this is one of the colors. I'm going to open them all up and we'll take a look in the pan and we'll take a look on a swatch. Paradise Venus or P Venus Paradise. Divine Rose. Love Struck. Cherish. and Desert Orchid. So Desert Orchid is the only color that has some shimmer in it that I got. There are two, but the other one, name of, I can't remember, I'll put it right down here if I remember to do that, sounded very much like the NARS Orgasm, where it was a pink with a peachy goldy pearl, and I thought, that's already been done. And this is something that I wouldn't normally do, there are a couple of things in here, actually, that I wouldn't normally do. I don't remember what I ordered from her website, honestly. I got a trio and an extra. So I know the Cherish was my extra, but I, I don't know what the trio was because it doesn't show in my invoice. Also, I went to bed at 5 in the morning. And it's 12.30 now, so... I'm probably not looking my best. Right now, I am just like with the Natasha Denona. I'm just wearing my sunscreen. I have two pumps of my tinted sunscreen mixed in with one that is not tinted to give me a little something. And then we're going to build a foundation. I think we'll go with the lightest one first, which is so interesting to me. I'm going to go in with Sukyu. And I will say, when I swatched these, they felt pretty creamy. Not super, super, super creamy, but they didn't feel dry and they didn't feel dusty. So let's see what's going on. I just did a boop, boop, boop like that and a good deal picked up. And not much is coming off. So let's see what happens. My foundation matches, you guys, are written below. So if you are new here, welcome. Thank you for being here. I hope you consider watching a couple of my videos and deciding, am I someone that is not completely unbearable and you might want to hear my opinion on things or see me do little tutorials once in a while on looks. 
But if you are new here, or if you aren't new here and you just haven't been paying attention, I list my foundation matches down below so you can get an idea of what color I am. And you know what? I think this is actually pretty. I didn't get any of the lip colors because they didn't have any, but honestly I didn't order them from Pat McGrath's site either because, you know, you can't tell from her lip swatches because they're computer generated what color things really are and they tend to be a little too nude for me. You know what, I kind of like this better when whatever's left here goes on the cheeks. I think this is actually nice. It's kind of like a, I feel like it's a, a bit of a sun-kissed look. I could put it all up here too and kind of use it as a bronzer. Maybe we'll just do that. Whatever's left. And when I say bronzer, I just mean because I feel like it looks like, oh, you set some time in the sun, huh? But it's past that pink stage where it's like, oh, you spent some time in the sun. You know, that kind of sunburn look. This is a few days later when, yes, I, I did a week ago, and now it's turning into a little bit of a tan. I like this. Okay. And that is Desert Orchid. Hmm. Because this, to me, can be really like a bronzer, I could do my next color with it. And then we'll put on foundation and go over. I don't know if this would be the color I would do it with, because if I'm looking to be tan... Maybe I'm going for one of these. Well, let's try this one. And this is Love Struck. Same brush, but there's nothing on it. And just so you can see how it's picking up. Picks up nice. This, I'm afraid, is a little too much, so I'm just going to dust it off on my hand. And look, even with that, there's so much left on. Hmm. This is the Suki brush, and I'm just going to... Kind of lay it down like that and then feather it out because there's no blush at the end. Hmm. hmm. Okay. Even though I <laughs> I was really ginger about this, I feel like a little too much. But a color like this you could kind of take up here. It's fixable, but a little too much. Bring it up here so you kind of have that mask of I got sun. And blend, 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 blend. I, I see there's potential for this. I really, really do. I just think a lighter hand. Now you saw I brushed some off on my hand here, but not much left the brush, so I would not dig in like I have with the last two brushes. I think a lighter hand or a lighter brush, something that's not very dense, will be helpful for people who have lighter skin tone. If you have darker, darker skin tone, you probably don't need to do that. When I'm turning my head, I'm like, I don't have a problem with it, but it is, when I look this way, it seems like it's a lot of color. Now I'm gonna go ahead and do some foundation and come back and do a couple more colors. All right, I put on some of my Chantecaille cushion, and you know, there's still some pinkness, but I have to say, because I have so much pinkness in my skin, there would be whether I had something underneath this or not. And there's Lucy just, you know, chilling out. Now, let's go in with Divine Rose. This is a mauve tone, which I used to be all about the mauves years and years and years ago. I'm just not about them anymore. But, you know, they're fine in the winter time. And I just cleaned this off after loading it up because I want to do a little bit of a lighter application. But this is a different brush. This is the Wayne Goss. I think it's the number two. And with this kind of brush, because it's circular, you kind of have to go all the way around. But I'm just trying to hit it just the littlest bit. So you can see a little color here, but not as much with the other ones. Let's go. That's not bad. I'm bringing a little bit more to my cheeks because I feel that that is better for my face. But 
you know what? This is a color I usually don't go for, but it's not bad at all. It's not something I would do in the summertime at all. <laughs> but for winter, not bad at all. But I, it does feel more, it feels more fall winter to me. You guys, it is hours later. I am editing and I realized that I did Love Struck twice. I'm going to show you what it looks like alone because the first time I did it with the Desert Rose, but I didn't do Cherish. So I put some more Kevin Aquan balm on my face and I have no color going on at all. It's a little ghastly looking and the light is different because this is past my regular shooting time. It's three o'clock but we need to do some Cherish. So here is the Cherish. Here is my Chikohoro. We're putting them on my face. And again, whoa. Okay, I was, I was going to say again, I just want to load up every the entire area of the brush and then dust off. I, I went in a little too hard. You do have to be, and I see some dust flying away. Careful with your pickup here. So now, you see hardly anything on the brush, but it's evenly coated, and we're gonna go in. Hmm, let's see if there's anything left. Or, i.e., when we do a light brushing of this. <laughs> I am not so sure about this color. The sun is out now, but like I said, it looks very different in here than it usually does. And I usually like the bluish toned things, but I'm beginning to think that the bluish toned things, for me to like them, have to be light. When they get darker, I'm not sure. You know what, though? It's not about me. <laughs> I have to remember that. It's about showing you what this looks like and do you think it'll work for you. And yes, the lighting is just not the same as everything else. So that's something to take into account as well. And there's nothing on my lips. So let's put something on my lips. Even in the bathroom with the lighting's a little different, it's a little too much. So I'm just going to go over it with my foundation brush that might have a little bit of the balm on it, maybe, to kind of help it out a little bit. But my main takeaway is these are super, super pigmented. And even though I'm trying to work it out, I'm a little bit of a learning curve for these brighter colors when you have lighter skin. If you have darker skin, you're probably going to be pretty happy. There, that, that's much, much better. And I'm wearing a SUQ on my lips. There is a very light application. I just, I feel so compelled to put more on. But at the same time, it's I'm finding it so hard to control how much. It just goes from, oh, this is, I want a little bit more to suddenly, oh, I got way too much on. Okay, I put on another coat of the Chantecaille and I powdered because I don't want to have any skipping issues going on. And this is Love Struck. This is so, so darn pretty. This is my Chikahoto brush, which they're all about the same density. So I am, again, going to be a little careful. Take off on your hand. So you know the powder is evenly distributed on your brush and then go in. And see how soft it is when you do it that way? You can always build. But it's all about how you do it. So, kind of hard to tell what's going on. I'm going to do the same thing. Load it up and take it off and we're going to build that way instead of going in full opacity.
And I'm going to bring it up for a little bit of draping and in because, again, at the end when most of the pigment is gone, because I just think it looks better on my face. Even when I had it on very, very sheerly, there's something about this color that I don't think is flattering on me, which is so strange because I love these kind of colors. Hmm. I'm not in love with this uh, color. I mean, it's dramatic. And that's Love Struck. This is Paradise Venus. Now, <laughs> obviously, this is for darker skin tones, but I'm not afraid of trying things that aren't made for me because I think it's I think it's important to experiment. You might be surprised. You might be right. You might be like, eh, it's not going to work for me. But just being attached to an idea of this is something that is too dark for me or too light for me isn't always the case. However, of my three brushes, I don't want to go in with any of them because they're too dense. And they're not super, super dense, but I need something that's really, really not dense. So this is the brush that is by Sephora, it's no longer being made, but I use this for my bronzers because I don't like that icky bronzer look that's not blended and you can kind of see it's like curtains on your face. And I find if you go in with something light, you don't have that issue. Same thing, I am going to load up and then take off. Loaded. And see how this plays out when you get to your end point? It's a really beautiful brush. I don't know why they're not doing it anymore. Now because this is so dark, you can use it more as a contour blush. You know, so I'm definitely getting this area, which is Elo Cheek Bono. and not so much on my cheek. Ooh, the sun's coming out. I don't think that's a bad look at all. I just think it has to be handled. Don't we all? It's so interesting because I was expecting something a little more brown because this looks brown to me. But on my hand, it, I feel like there's more of a copper situation going on here. So there's some orange in here, but on my face, I don't feel like it's looking all that orange. Okay, this is what I think. I think I need to put on some concealer again and redo this because I did rub this off on my hand that already had some pink on it. And when I looked at this brush, which I haven't used in ages, I see some pink. So this brush was picking stuff up as it was getting rid of stuff. I just, I just don't think this is a fair assessment of this color. So I'll be right back. And here are some things I'm doing when you're not seeing me. I'm cleaning this brush and I'm having some coffee. And I'm going to go in with the Kevin Kwan Balm, which is probably the most full coverage thing I have. Back in a minute. I'm back again. I'm like, look at this. I just cleaned the brush, and the color that came off is definitely the same color as this blush. Let's just do a slot to slide comparison to my paper towel. It's definitely right, and yet I feel like it's reading a little different on me. Isn't that strange? So just to make sure, I'm going to do some Kevin Kwan on the face and we're going to do the final look. So here we go. I've cleaned the brush. I cleaned my hand. You don't, by the way, have to do it on the hand, but I wonder if that was a mistake. I do have a towel here that I can also wipe off on and we're going to do the same thing where we're going to really get this into the brush. And yeah, on the brush, 
it, I am getting a pink nature to this. You can probably see it more right over here. Take some off on the hand. It's so interesting. And again, right here where the, the brush fibers, uh, bristles, are the lightest, you can see a pink nature. And same application. Just turning this around like as I'm moving. And start with a little and build if you are a lighter skin tone. Um, this is a very confusing color for me. I really, I don't know what to think of this color. I just want to feather it a little bit so it doesn't look too hard because the, the side look is not a good look on me. Even though I have a chubby face, I think a lot of people would think, well, you want to slim down, but because I'm cheeky, I'm not just chubby, I'm cheeky, it just doesn't look right on me. And I look better when I have color on the apple of my cheek. But this color is more contoury in its nature on my skin tone. I don't know. I think it's workable, but I don't think this is it. Because now when I'm looking in this mirror, I think it's way too much. When I look to the side, I don't think it's way too much. But either way, the whole thing is you can decide, is this a color that will work for you based on my skin tone? And that is Paradise Venus Part 2. Hey guys, it's the next day. I actually shot the outro as per usual, but I found that I was having a hard time pulling together my thoughts. And so I shot it again at five o'clock and still found that I, I was just having a hard time putting it all together. So I decided to write my thoughts and I shot it at nine o'clock last night. And I just haven't figured out how to shoot at night yet. So I looked like I had two black eyes and that had been punched around my cheekbones because I will say this, they're pretty long wearing. So I'm back this morning and I have my thoughts. I have a little script. Just hitting the things that I want to talk about. So if there is a place where Pat McGrath explains what she was doing color-wise when she created these colors, I don't know where that is. It looks to me, and it looked to me immediately but I thought this, it looked to me like it was three colors for light skin, three colors for medium skin, and three colors for dark skin. I am a person who loves to play with color, and I have had success in the past using very bright colors with a very light hand, and I just, I just kind of dig that. I don't really love a nude-ish blush. I, I'm slowly warming up to it, but I feel that blush makes me look alert and awake and vibrant and if it's the right color and I wear it high enough it makes the eyes sparkle and that's what I'm looking for from blush. So let's talk about the three groups as I see it. The first group is I think they're nude shades. If my thesis is correct for the lightest color skin and those shades are rose with golden pearl and that's the desert orchid which I bought and which I'm wearing today. There's a pink with golden pearl which I didn't get because it sounded very much like Nars Orgasm and then there is a beige pink which looked far far too light for me and I was thinking that must be for the most fairest of people. Then we have our second group. The second group again I'm assuming for medium skin tones. There's a soft pink with a golden pearl and this is where it gets confusing because to me, wouldn't that, it looks like from the picture that it's lighter than some of the colors in the first group and it would be in that group. You know, so when I'm trying to decide what I want to buy, I'm like, um, I was confused. And that's just why we're going over this, you guys, because I'm a Virgo, I can't help it. If something doesn't make sense to me, I have to break it down. So join me on this journey. Then there is the mauve rose, and that is divine rose, and I got that. 
And then there is Cherish, which she is calling a neutral pink, but to me, it's quite cool. So today I put on the Desert Rose, and I just felt like it was a little too warm for me, like I needed a little pinkness. And so I dug into the Cherish, which is this one, and I have to say, when I first did it, I was like, I, I'm not feeling pretty. That's the whole thing, you guys. It's about me. It's does this make me feel pretty and I wasn't getting it but now it's kind of warmed up to the skin and I'm like and my hair is down which you know the hair down changes everything right because the hair looks quite dark when it's pulled back there are no shadows on the face because there's nothing to make shadows the hair is down and suddenly the equation has changed and suddenly I'm liking the cheek look that I have a lot lot better but um, yeah the Cherish, to me, that doesn't look neutral. Then the third group for the darkest skin tones. These are the colors that I was really interested in because I do like a bright color. And I thought I could make this work with a light hand. So I got two of them. And they are Love Struck, which is this one. And she's calling this the Berry Pink. And yes, that is very cool. There's the Coral, which I really wanted. But I, I thankfully, I'm like, stop. <laughs> stop, You're, this is going to be too much for you. And I already have Grapefruit from Laura Mercier, which I figure that kind of hits that spot. And then there's the Terracotta, which I also got, which is the Paradise Venus. And you saw what happened with the Paradise Venus. So it's a little confusing to me what they are calling the colors and what they look like online, which basically they're just showing you this and doing a swipe, which is probably computer generated. It's just hard because what they look like in the pan, for instance, she's calling this a pink. That doesn't look pink to me and doesn't look pink on my face either. So it's very confusing <laughs> to me. Let's break away from the colors for a minute. The powders themselves, when I, I think it was when I was doing Cherish, where it really showed up, but also when I was doing the mauve, which is Divine Rose. These powders are very beautiful, and they have a slight sheen to them that looks skin-like, looks healthy skin-like, but not reflective. Some of them are reflective, and we've already gone over those. There's three of them that have golden pearl in them, but most of them they are calling demi-matte, and once you get them in, buff them in, they look really, really pretty on the skin, as you can see. So I like the formula very, very much. I'm still confused about the colors, and I started to think, well, maybe she's trying to do a warm color, a cool color, and a neutral color in each group, but that doesn't really work out either. And as I'm sitting here, I'm thinking, I got three pinks, and two warms, so I, I, I don't see anything neutral in here for me. These all are cool based as far as I'm concerned, not a neutral pink. And then we have the terracotta and this one, which are warm, but the terracotta, on me, it read kind of pink. Now let's talk about the application. The application, this is the way I apply blushes. I think that some people might, you know, say you're applying them wrong, blah, 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 blah. Please save yourself the time of sending me comments like that. This is how I approach something that is very pigmented, is I get it all over because I'm going to be swirling around and I don't want any blank spots, but then I take it all off. And I noticed, for instance, when I, I tried one of the colors and I'm like, I just want a teeny bit more. And it's a hard negotiation from just a little bit more to, oh my God, way too much. Also, these darker colors, which I thought I could make work on me, I don't think so. I, I, when I was editing, I recognized something really, really important. I came to the table bias. Despite the fact that I was completely annoyed that I ordered something on the 21st and it won't be here till the 4th, and I think that's just not the way to run a business. I think it's wrong. I do. I really tried to put it aside, and I tried to keep in mind, and this is probably my mistake where my bias came in, that Pat McGrath is a very revered makeup artist. And 
I feel that she is an artist. She is an artist whose medium happens to be makeup. How you apply that artistry, which is very specific to the general public with a makeup line, could be a, another video, but it, not the place here. But I do consider her an artist. I know that she is very well respected. And so I had that in mind, where I wanted to be respectful, but I wanted to really understand what was going on here and what she had in mind when she designed it. And I wasn't able to ascertain what that was. And I think at the end of the day, my first instinct that she had done three groups of colors for different skin tones is probably correct because the things from the darkest group that I got, the two colors from the darkest group, I had the hardest time with. Again, I have previously bought bright or deep blushes and I've been able to make them work, but in this case, I don't think I did, even though, well, I'm editing, I'm, I'm watching myself say, oh yes, this has potential, I can make this work. And I thought, why am I trying so hard to make something work when it clearly isn't? because I'm coming to the table with a bias, and that's not good for for you, right? You're trying to figure out, how are these colors gonna look on my skin tone? How are these powders? And I'm sitting here going, this is gonna work when it really actually looks pretty bad. <laughs> and I've come to the conclusion that these darker colors, there's something about them, they really were made for people with darker skin tone. If you have a lighter skin tone, I think it's very, very, very hard to make these work. I'm going to try one more time before I return some of these, but I found that when I turned to the side, I'm like, oh yeah, I really like this. And I took some of those shots where I was holding this up. I thought, yes, this works with my skin tone. There's, there's not a problem. I've done it well. But when I look straight ahead, all I saw was darkness on the side of my face. It wasn't the color. And I think there might be um, a deeper base to these colors. I don't know. I'm, I'm not a makeup artist and I'm not a chemist. I don't create products. I'm not sure what it is, but I do feel pretty darn sure right here and right now that those darker colors are absolutely intended for darker skin tones with no crossover. So yes, it's obvious this is for darker skin tones, but me, I've made these kind of colors work before. They do cross over. In this case, they're not crossing over. And I, I do kind of wonder, as somebody who's painted a lot, <laughs> I bought paints a lot and I had paints mashed a lot, I know that you, with paint, you start with a darker base for darker colors. That way you don't have to put as much pigment in. And I do wonder if that's what's going on with these darker colors. And that's why they were really, they were really tough for me. So look at that. I hardly even watched, looked at my notes, but I think I broke down the groups appropriately. I mean, to my thoughts, who knows if they're appropriate. Yeah, and I guess, you know, the final thing I want to say is this is really, this is of course about me because I'm getting these for the first time and I'm trying to see if I can make them work for me. But it's really, really about you. That's what the channel is about. It's about showing you how these work showing you what they look like on my skin tone so you can decide is this something that I want and those are my conclusions the powders are really good the colors I'm having a problem with I I haven't I haven't bought everything so I have one two three four five colors but I didn't get anything that seemed super neutral I either have warm or I have cool and they're not making me feel particularly pretty, which is the whole point of makeup. Although, as I said, looking right now, I'm like, oh yeah, I do feel pretty. It took a while to get there. <laughs> and that's it, you guys. I'm sorry if it was totally all over the place. I have seen reviews where people are just raving up and down. Please, you know, rate in your hate for me. I'm trying just to be honest and I'm not feeling ravey about this. I'm feeling a little confused and I'm feeling like I really have to work for it. And I also feel like I want to try a couple of more colors, but I can't because 
I haven't seen them in person. When I went to my Sephora, they weren't on display. It was I just went in there with the list of what I wanted and they handed them to me, but it wasn't like I could open them and see. And one more thing, several people I have heard are having problems with this clasp. And I, as I mentioned, I didn't have a problem with it and I do wonder if it's just a different batch, but I also notice this latch right here, if you press in more at the top of the latch, so I'm going like this, instead of doing a flat on press, I'm kind of tipping my thumb up towards this side of the clasp, up here. That seems to release it better than just doing the whole thing. Just a, a little tip for those of you who may be having problems. Otherwise, if you are having problems, I do think that you should contact them and get another one because this one, I haven't had any problems with at all, any of these. And that's it, you guys. Thank you so much for spending some time with me. I really, truly hope this was helpful to you. And I hope you come back again. Until we meet again, be safe and smart. And I am wishing you good health.